everybody. Welcome back to Uncelestial's Pleasure Dome. Oh, showing a little extra skin. Excuse me, please. Uh, it's uh, Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday and it's 10 p.m., which means it's Nintendo Power Project Night, which is every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 p.m. And uh, here we play all of the games that made the top 30 list in Nintendo Power Magazine um, for now. It becomes a top 20 list later in later years for the three different systems, but for now it's a top 30 list of NES games, and we're playing through all of them for every issue of Nintendo Power, starting with issue one, which is what we're still on. And it sounds like I'm at the beginning of a long haul, but guess what? We're on game number two on this list, and we've played the other, uh, well, it'll be 20 uh, seven that I've already played. Now we're playing, or no, sorry, the other 28. And now we're playing the 29th game on the list. And now, and the, now we're at number two. So, wow. Uh, I'm so excited to play this. This is Mike Tyson's punch out. And Mike Tyson's punch out is the game I got when I first got my Nintendo in 1987. And, uh, Oh, yeah, please post all you want, Flitcher. So, to me, this was like the game that introduced me to Nintendo. I have this and Super Mario Brothers. So, it's just a great, um, it's a great thing in my life that I get to play right now. And I'm pretty fucking good at it. I doubt you're going to see me get knocked down before we get to, like, Super Macho Man. Maybe Soda Popinski might get me. So, this will be interesting because, um, yeah, we'll see how hairy it gets later on. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> so, hey, um, a couple of things. When we... Uh, Mr. Dream doesn't exist, by the way. This is... In this house, we only respect Mike Tyson as the final boss of Punch-Out. I'll have you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay, I'm being very silly. The um, the uh, rules of the of the road here. One is that we only um, do kind of casual playthroughs. Normally, um, I'm pretty good at this, so I'm not sure we'll have to do any of this. But if I feel like we have to use save states or rewinds to uh, get through the yeah, thank you, thank you. The air quality is not good in in California right now with the smoke. Uh, it's been pretty bad. But anyway, I don't, uh, you know, anyway, I always say this disclaimer is a casual gaming channel. If I have to rewind, whatever, uh, don't be surprised. I also curse a lot. I also keep my liquor handy. Uh, and so if any of those things bother you, please uh, just consider yourself warned. Um, the other thing to notice is we, um, we do, oh, hold on one second. Oh, okay, I thought I thought the wife wanted to talk to me. She was doing laundry. The other thing we do is, um, if you subscribe, then you get a free game. There are people watching this now who can attest to my uh, holding to that system. Um, I will find you and I will whisper to you if you do it quietly. I will give you a free game, and it's of your choice. So go ahead and look at the list on forward.law slash codes. Use your Amazon Prime. Uh, Twitch benefit and get a free game. Why the hell not? Um, I think that's everything I have to say. So let's get into it. I will try another world circuit. I think all it is is basically a mix up of the order, but we will do it. Why the hell not? Okay, retro arc. I was practicing on Tyson, and it was going only okay. Now, the problem with playing this on an emulator is lag, and I've been working on the latency issue. I will do Taboo after we get through. Let's try to get through a cycle of this. The game isn't that long. And then we'll play it. We'll see what Taboo has to say. The thing about this is if you just one, two, three him and then wait, you can just keep punching him. And... 
He only blocks long combos. Oh, here we go. Oh! I made it quick. <laughs> Thanks, Sin Solo, for that follow. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> I think he's just from France because of um, the preconception that French people are wimps since they surrendered in World War II. Alright. I don't want to run out of uh, hearts on Glass Joe. I'm being very aggressive, just trying to get through. Oh, right, yeah. There we go! We're on to Von Kaiser. Everybody's basically just a racist representation of their country, kind of like Street Fighter. They gave him little German pants and boots. sound he makes when he sees the uppercut coming is pretty priceless. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> oh shit! That's embarrassing to get hit by Von Kaiser. Sorry. Finish Kaiser with a body blow? Oh, okay. Whatever you want, I mean. Right. He does this thing. I'm just gonna... Okay. I have better things to worry about than Von Kaiser. And he was never seen again. Oh, I kind of remember that. He does this scoop back thing. I kind of remember that. We could rewind. We could do that that way. You know, the game is only like a half hour long if you play it well. It's kind of interesting seeing it in reverse, actually. And this is kind of cute. This is what Von Kaiser does in his mind after being beaten by me. He just. If I could go back to that one second. Alright. Uh, sorry. I'm... Alright, we'll let him keep that. He's gotta do it when he ducks. Come on. Bro, let me bother. There it was. <laughs> Where is the NHK TV camera? Hello, Tokyo. Alright. I think we've humiliated Ron Kaiser enough. We beat him standing up, we beat him body blow. Piston Honda ain't shit either. If you throw one at him right as uh, his guard comes down, then his guard stays down. So, whoops! So you can kind of steal stars off of him that way. My god, do they really let me punch him for that long? So punch, wait for it to come down, punch again, and the second one will be a star. Like, bam. Oh, it's really good if you can time that right. Okay. 
Oh, did I lose my star? I did. Star. Star. Ouch! I hate when they land punches on me. That's what I think of you hitting me. Oh, is he down? No, he's coming back. Star. Star. Okay. I adjusted the lag pretty well, so I'm still getting used to it. I was doing that until the last minute. Let's see if I can pull it off this time. No. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it. I deserve that. I'm going to round two with Piston Honda. This is not how I expected this to go today. But okay, what I did was I enabled two frames of, um, what do they call it? Read ahead, CPU read ahead. Or sorry, three. And it causes a weird sort of jittery reaction, but it, it actually works really well. And so, on my computer, it's running two emulators, and it's sending my inputs to the future one, and then trying to sync them up. Oh, that's it. He's dead. Oh, really? The one-hit uppercut? <sighs> well, come on. I beat him in 32 seconds in the second round. But anyway, I should have played more with the three three frames frames of read ahead. It's an interesting effect. If you have that enabled in like Super Mario Brothers, like you can't even do long jumps because it's so off, like timing wise, that it it gets the button press like only a portion of it. So the read ahead works poorly for things where you're doing long press, but for Punch Out, where every button push is an explosive like one off thing, and there's no like velocity build up the way there is to like a Mario run or a Mario long jump. I'm finding it it worked really good and I, I was calibrating on the really fast opponents who give you like a split second of notice. And it worked a lot better. I was actually able to like dodge Tyson. Silly one, you notice the clock stops when your punches go fast there. That was something I noticed the other day for the first time. I always was confused about how I felt Don Flamenco looked like. Like, um, it's like a little bit like Inspector Gadget. It's like a little bit like, um, Prince Charles. Maybe Adam Sandler. I feel like. Is there a character on, like... Oh, why is it doing that? Like, Gilligan's Island or something, looks like? I don't know. Maybe maybe the guest smart guy. I don't know. He looks... It's, he's got an interesting face. And he also only lasted 40 seconds. King Hippo. It's kind of a shame you only fight him once, because... He's a pretty amazing character. Of course, I had to use his underwear shot in the intro card. Getting more into it. The game is really weird if you play like the upper tier characters for a long time and then kind of come back up from Glass Joe. Like it's like you kind of are feeling like rushing. Hey Plinksy, welcome. This is uh, 
Mike Tyson's Punch Out from 1987. Classic NES game. We're gonna fight Mike Tyson at the end. Oh, he was a Captain N villain. I didn't know that about King Hippo. Trying to time it so I get the, uh... Hmm. Sixty-nine hearts. I might as well just harass him. Oh, here we go. That stupid, like, ducking left and right thing just gives you stars. It's a pretty amazing. Oops, I was being busy. There it is. Mother Brain was the boss. I quit my certain King Hippo were our hapless goons. I gotta watch this again. Okay, it's going down. Oh, is my backup running? No, it's not. I don't know why that is. I'll close some chrome windows. Excuse me. Uh, it'll just be better this way. Okay. <laughs> Alright, whatever you say. It sounds charming. I should watch it? Tutorials? Is that what you're saying? I should watch Captain N? I have the DVDs. Right next, uh, in the next closet there. to dodge the uppercuts. He's pretty good at it, too. Yeah. Playing too aggressive. Mm. I'll play more standard, just... You want to get one knockdown in before he does his... his, uh charges, because he does two of them, which are sure knockdowns. Oh, okay. Well, I don't like being... I'm disappointed. But I do like... Oops. I do like reliving Nintendo history. Here we go. Come back for more. The one that I think was the most shameless of those Nintendo cartoons had Super Mario Bros. 3 in the title in a really, like, not even great way. It was like Captain N and the Adventures of Super... Hold on one second. And the Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm like, okay. It's kind of squeezing it in. No way! You went as Captain N for Halloween? Man, that's pretty tight. You gotta post a link of a uh, picture if you got it. Didn't he have a, like, zapper sidearm? That's pretty fucking funny. Did anyone get it? Like, that's a really deep cut. I would have gotten it. I think. That's amazing. That is fucking cool. Alright, let's do a better job on Piston Honda this time. He does a charge that is easy to uh, knock, knock down in his second go round, so. Okay. 
is not as susceptible to the cheap shot stars. Okay. Oh! They're also giving you less hearts. It didn't work. My bad. There's one. He got me. I gotta be careful my aggressive uh, uppercut use. I'm paying for it. I gotta get him stunned first. Two, three, whatever you want. I'll go to sleep already. Does it have like the N? He had an N on it, right? That means a bell. Ah. Uh, it's hard for me to figure why I'm not putting him away so quickly. <laughs> Banzai. I mean, I guess since it's made in Japan, they can be as, like, stereotypical as they want of themselves, but damn. It's funny, the story behind the NES version, because it had a sort of roundabout way of coming into existence. Like, they made this arcade cabinet. There we go. Should have done that the first time. They made this arcade cabinet with two screens because they had this really successful run with Donkey Kong. Thought it would last forever. Their follow-ups weren't as big of a hit. So they're like, what are we going to do with all these monitors we have? And so they've had a two-monitor uh, arcade cabinet design that they used for Punch-Out, the arcade game. And then when they wanted to bring it to the nest, they realized, like, the nest can't really do this wireframe thing. So they, they compensated by making Mac really small, so that you could see the full, all the signals of the opposing boxer. And they gave him that name. Mike Tyson, meanwhile, is like 20 years old. He hadn't even won a world championship yet. They just, he just had all this hype. So Nintendo took a little bit of a risk, even signing him on to do it, but they were just so impressed with him that they did. And uh, he got $50,000 for a three-year contract. And then when that expired, they just re-released it as Punch-Out. Uh, I think he'd already uh, been like accused of, uh, of rape by Robin Givens at that point, and probably factored into the decision not to renew, plus he probably could have commanded a much more expensive contract, since he was the champion by that time, and the game was several years old, so they just... in comes Mr. Dream. There we go. I play Soda Pop pretty conservatively, just kind of responding to what he does, and then I tend to... He got a TKO if I don't miss an opportunity. Ugh. I wish I could have closed the deal just then. Yes, Drunkinski, the... Even his dialogue is clearly mentioning alcohol, but, uh... Soda pop, and then the pop on the soda bottle was their papering over of the alcohol references by Nintendo of America. Whoops! That was a bad, bad timing. <sighs> Normally you can get in there when he does that and get some stars, but... He's not great to have stars against, anyway. Oh 
normally I put him away in one round. This is such a disappointing run so far. For me. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying playing. Oof. Alright, come on. I hope that was worth a laugh, because now you're going down. And when I got the Nintendo, as I say, this was... I got the action set with Mario Duck Hunt and the Zapper. And, uh, and then also Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I was set for, like, months. Like, that was great. Do that and rinse some games and you got tons of fun on the NES. Alright, here is where it starts getting really hard. Oh, not Bull Bull. Mr. Sandman is who I thought was nice. Bull Bull should be fine. They gave him a couple extra quirks in this version. Yeah, he counters now. He does that. Oh, you can actually uppercut him. And I'm not sure why Punch-Out was the game I just had to have. Oh yeah, it only goes down if you uppercut him or he is hit by the charge counter attack in this mode. But it's not difficult. Oh, came up on nine. It's always a little nerve-wracking when he starts to charge. You do have to have a good sense of timing. But actually the window is wider on it than a lot of things in this game. On 9 again! I'm gonna use some of these uppercuts and try to speed this along. There we go. Okay. So, we've coasted through all knockouts or TKOs. Oh yes, Don Flamingo has a second. I'm thinking Inspector Gadget is the main likeness I was thinking of. Prince Charles is in there, though. Like a skinnier Prince Charles. Oh yeah, he does this taunting thing. Sorry, I did not practice this one much. There's the taunting. There, that's the, uh... This is the mode I'm more used to. You kind of start this counter-attack chain with him. He goads you into hitting him. Sometimes he counters, and then you counter that. Is that his first knockdown? Ugh. All these second round fights. Oops. Mm. Like a mosquito was sting like a bee copyrighted. There's a pitiful amount of energy recovery. The smugness of Prince Charles. Come on. Uh, 
There we go. This little dance is kind of amazing. Alright, I'm about to go pink with exhaustion. He won't take the bait. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, um... You know, everyone I met from Spain has been a real... Really skinny. Maybe... Maybe it's supposed to be a Fumiko dance. Like his little... Punch that lifts his fist way up in the air. I don't know. Whoa! He's out of his taunting phase. Are we going round three with Don fucking Flamenco? Ugh. Uh oh. I'm glad we did, because I knocked his hair off. I don't think- I kind of remember that. That's funny as hell. Okay, man. I wish it was off in the sprite. It'd be hilarious if he came out all bald. I guess you're supposed to believe it's a toupee then. Yeah, here he comes. Come on, man. <clears throat> How many times do I gotta knock this idiot down? in one round. There we go. Good night. Okay. This is where it gets really, really difficult. So... Ah! Retroarch just crashed when I tried to save the state. I hope that saved. I'll look up a uh, code for Mr. Sandman if if uh, it didn't. Okay. That's funny. That must be because of Read Ahead that it was slightly ahead in the game. I'd hit start. It does, it's a weird sensation, the feeling it gives you. Ugh. Ugh. Right. I remember what I was supposed to do for this dude. Sorry, let me let stay again. I remember my little routine now. Right. You can take advantage of his, um... The best... See, these are all one hits, so they're not very effective, right? So you don't want to be sitting around waiting for this. But, what you can do is goad him into hitting you after the minute mark. Uh, here we go. Oops. You can hit him four times. One, one, two, three... The 
home routines are on. Hold on. <sighs> Try that one more time. <laughs> See, even waiting for it. The lag is just. It's just there. There's not much you can do. That was kind of a pre calc. Oops. No, no, no. There we go. <sighs> Hollow victory. But this is where things break down with Macho Man will, will actually be easier for me than Mr. Sandman. He's not as inscrutable, like, Mr. Sandman has these... that one move where he just gives you a brief second. Not even a second. Mm -hmm. You can't dodge to the left on that, which is my standard. Terrible. Get a knockdown in pretty early in the second round I'm doing this. Cool. Where'd Flitcher go? He's waiting for this for days. Here we go. Clearly drained the most energy. There we go. Oh. It starts blocking it. That, uh. That move of mine. Then I know this is coming. That, there's the block, so... And the jumps are from Rita Head, too. I'm just not sure... The latency issues make it all that playable past a certain point. There we go. It's hard. Like, they put it on the NES Classic, I'd be amazed if anyone... Beat it on that thing. All right, so I'll save again. Uh, save my state so that we continue. Please don't crash again, RetroArch. Okie doke. I know. I didn't quite buy that. Maybe the idea is that he's lying about it. It didn't take the save. And it lost my old one. That must have corrupted. Alright. Find Super Macho Man's code. Uh, let's see. My record will be zero wins, zero losses, but here we go. Maybe there's a better one on this list. Oh, there's a good one. Nine, four, zero, eight, oops, messed that up. Nine, four, zero, eight, six, 
one, eight, five, three. Oops. Yeah, we've been doing that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, now that's a record I can be proud of. Why is it running like that? It's all... I think I need a new computer. I think it's finally breaking down. Now he looks like... What's his name? Andy... The uh, avant-garde comedian from the 70s. But a really muscular version of him. Only when he's in his, like, standing still. Andy Kaufman, thank you. But he had gray hair in the thing. Oh, here we go. And that's actually easier to dodge than Mr. Sandman's thing. Any one of those, if they had hit me, instant knockdown. Really rough. No matter how much health you have. Woo! So the stakes were very high at that moment. Here it goes again. keep losing my grip on um, the D-pad up. I could have knocked him down again. <laughs> Maybe they didn't mean to have him have gray hair. It's, it's super weird. Gray hair and the super, like, receding hairline. See? Like there, I think he looks like... For a moment he looks like Kaufman. because I'm sweating. I slipped off the D-pad. I should use my other controller. I'm using like a classic Xbox One 360 controller. Concentrate very hard on this. Woo! There we go again. Oh, he got me. There we go. Sorry to rewind, I'm just frazzled. Like, I can't believe my computer's failing. My hands are all sweaty. Alright. This is cool. I need the paper. There's a couple secret codes that we'll, uh, we'll put in that make the game do a couple of weird things. 
the dream fight, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Uh, wow, it rolled my record over to zero zero. It was 99. Clearly, uh, three digit numbers were not supported. All right. Here goes nothing. This is really hard. So expect a lottery winding. It. See, I'm, the pre-dodging only works sometimes. Ah. You have to not only dodge, but come back from the dodge in, in that brief window of vulnerability, so force yourself back into place. Like that doesn't cut it. Meek. Meek. There it is. Took, took a lot of rewinding. The winks are pretty brutal too. The winking shots. Okay, you got a few hits on me, but I'm standing. If you survive the first round, the second match or the second uh, round is actually like where he becomes beatable. It's it's not one two. It's they let you win like six or seven on him. So he opens with these six horrible shots. That you absolutely cannot dodge. And that's them. Let's see, now we can open up the fight a little. Do I look that much like Ryan Johnson? That's really funny. <laughs> My first uh, goal was to make a movie that was bad, because that's what I ended up doing, so that must have been my goal. I was also hoping to make Luke a really bitter, uh, giving up ass, unsympathetic character, because I felt people liked him too much. And, um,. I wanted to make sure that all of the jokes were really unfunny. Um, I wanted the editing to destroy the actual climax of the movie, which was the standoff in the throne room, and keep cutting away from that before people got too excited. I don't like people enjoying themselves. Um, yeah. I wanted... Oh, I'm in bad shape. I wanted people to uh, basically come away with several points where they laughed uh, at my movie and never with it. For example, ooh, when they watched uh, Princess Leia fly like Mary Poppins in space, and uh, but not when you know someone's making your mama jokes because that's stupid. So that was my thought process. I just wanted to make something like that made people kind of miss the prequels. So let me get this straight. He's gonna do that and that. It's rough. It's rough in here. Since that. Right. Right. I can't hit him. 
down, not dodge. Okay, I don't accept that because I was doing the thing I should. Yeah, um, I think the read ahead's making that really odd. It's like registering a lot of those down taps as doubles, which is what the ducking is. There we go. As long as I survive it. Oh, wait. I've never uppercut my Tyson. <laughs> I'm performing uh, orthodontics while I fight my opponents. It's a free service I like to include. That was a third. We're going to a decision. It's because they don't look good on stream. I actually really love simulating. I won! We beat Punch Out! I love simulating CRT. But it, unless I'm streaming at 4K with minimal encoding artifacts. This, the people watching just can't see what I see. That's great for at home, though. And here's the colorful cast of stereotypes that I beat up. There's a, um... I think it's Pack-In with Retroarch. I think it's called Phosphor. That's really nice. That, um... It's like the first pass is like a slight blurring effect, and uh, then there's a slight, uh, what is it, like, bloom lighting, I guess you would call it, and uh, then a slight gridding for pixels, and then scan lines. Uh, the order actually might be that the glow is a little after the scan lines, because that's how it w would work on a TV. My eyes are creepy. Maybe because I had a rough last fight there. Uh, anyway, you combine all that, and then the the last pass, which is optional, is some screen curvature. Um, so it kind of bulbs out the image like uh, like on a convex surface, and it looks it just looks like a fucking TV. It's so so good. See, so yeah, CRT Royale is a pack in. It's okay. Oh, can't do anything. So let's see some of the fun codes they put in. I brought a list. The first one, and this is a cute joke, is if you enter, they were based in Redmond, Nintendo of America was. And if you entered their call center number to Two zero. It's supposed to be a busy signal. Um, they also did. Let's see, zero zero, or no, sorry. Um, eight hundred four two. Oops, ah, fucked it up. I think it's the same thing. I think this later on they got an 800 number and it was the same trick, but let me make sure. Yeah. Um, which is cute. There's also, if you do, let me see. So, uh, 10611301. Two, and then uh, press select A and B. You can see the credits for the game. 
which are not in the ending. It's just a couple of weird Easter eggs that are in this thing. So there you go. Very small staff created this. Uh, but the one we're really interested in is one, three, five, seven, oops, nine, two, four, six, eight, and then press, oops, sorry, I messed that up. Wait, that, that's not the right amount of digits. I wrote this down wrong. Let me search for this again. Okay, great. One, three, five, seven, nine, two, four, six, eight. And that is another world circuit. And this is essentially <laughs> Justin Bailey. That's funny. I'm going to turn off my bot. I've just had it with this shit. And but anyway, um, this is a replay of like the last circuit, which is world circuit, but with a t totally different like mix of the characters plus raised stakes. Um, like the, I think the deal is if you lose any of these, it's instant game over, but let's play through another world circuit. You get a slightly different ending that shows your, um, round time. But yeah, that's a whole lot of shill. You should definitely check out Phosphor if you can find that in your in your retro arc. Definitely worth a look. We didn't even use Justin Bailey when we played Metroid. I should have done that. Uh, yeah. I think that's the only way I know of where you actually play as not in her suit. Samus. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Okay. Yeah, they're they're like a tool. You can misuse it. I feel like 4K at a distance looks pretty good. Whoa! One, two. But yeah, I will be first in line for when they have 8K computer monitors because I can already see pixels in 4K with a screen of sufficient size on my desk and I'm just like, fuck those pixels. My phone looks better, you know? I know it's first world problems, but let's face it, we live in the first world. Oh, motion blur tends to smear scan lines. That's interesting. I forget if motion blur is activated on phosphor, I'll have to look for that. What do I play that's vertical? Um, yeah, like Legendary Wings or something. I'll give it a shot. That's a really interesting thing. Varth. One, 
two, three. Ah, oh, he always does that, doesn't he? Ah, oh, fuck that up. One second. Hmm. Did they take it out in one circuit? He's supposed to be able to be like. Maybe they took it out. Yeah, it doesn't knock him down. That was an instant knockdown in uh, the last go round. Alright, another world circuit raising the stakes. just had sufficiently low energy. Varth gets destroyed when you move left and right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, they're a tool because we... our displays have gotten a certain way. And... I support it in a general sense, but I, I do agree that some of the ways it actually turns out in practice are unfortunate. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't run them on anything like the the Nest Classic. It's Nest Classic filters are trash. Those are 720 output. You know, they just don't look good. I think I can get a star off them. Yeah. I know, 720p. What am I, a farmer? Get some water, excuse me. <clears throat> Why don't I just bust out my iPod while I'm at it? Watching 720p stuff. Yeah, I was think I've been thinking like a cool setup to have, even for streaming, would be um, what are they called? Uh, Ever stores, like the flash cards that work on original hardware and um, have support for like save states and stuff like that. And then if you mod a Nest with an RGB mod, it gets progressive scan and looks amazing. So, if I had that combination of, um, of things, that would be pretty great for the stream, because I could still use save states to get through difficult areas if the stream was lagging because I suck, which happens sometimes. Uh, but then I could also um, be playing on original hardware instead of this stuff. Which is a ter terrible, terrible Xbox 360 controller. This thing. That is what I'm dealing with. Yeah, the those Sony CRTs that you're mentioning. Ugh, oh, they were great. We had a Trinitron that was a nice flat surface. It just looked fantastic in the living room. Whenever I could, I would talk mom and dad into letting me hook up the machine in the living room. The one I had, normally, was like literally a 13-inch TV, super bulbous, like, screen shape, cut off the edges of everything, but it was mine. Yeah, I don't know, I'm used to them. They're like comfort objects. I have this interesting one that 8-Bit Doe makes, where uh, it's rechargeable. And uh, it can pair with a Nest Classic, and that's a pretty great experience. Um, you know, you have the extra, there's uh, shoulder buttons. You have the extra buttons to do like Nest games if you want to, but it feels super, super uh, authentic. I mean, to me, I'm just used to the Nest controller, so that's cool. The Super Nintendo one, though, that's a classic. It's a, such a great feeling controller. 
Oh yeah, you can't do that trick. Right? No, I don't think so. Oh wait, I need to save that uppercut for when he's low on energy. Sorry, I'm trying to read while fighting Bald Bull here. I promise I will. The corners of the plastic 8-bit nests are really hard. Really? I... So my nest is in storage in the garage. I'll have to bust that out and compare it. That's really fascinating. Maybe maybe I'm under an illusion that the nest was more forgiving because of the 8-bit dough. But I also have... I mean, it's pretty sharp. It's not razor sharp. But I feel like a pretty significant point. And then I also have the um, Nintendo-issued stuff over there that came with the NES and SNES classics. I have a couple of those controllers. So I could use that as a comparison point, too. But for the most part, the 8-bit do stuff is um, its just so spot-on. Like, the buttons just feel like they protrude out really far and are super clicky and amazing. Um, like, it's like the best feeling, the best version of one of the classic controllers you could ever have or something. Oh, shit. Gotta get him down to sufficient weakness. Oh no, I'll tell you what, I'll put him down one more time. Two fifty-nine. One second before the bell. We have a first round knockout. TKO, anyway. So interestingly, Soda Popinski, then Bulbul, then Don. <laughs> With the last two being um, Mr. Sandman and Super Macho Man. And really quickly after this, I'll also pull open regular Punch-Out and just see Mr. Dream and the disgrace that that is. Ah, shit. Woo! Taunting me. Ah, I waited until I was tired. There we go. Yeah, um, the Nest Classics, a great little casual device, but. I have been thinking about investing in a pretty hardcore modded NES. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Especially if I can get an adapter to use the new NES controllers on the classic NES. Because they're just so great. It's so great to have brand new ones. Don't mess my hair, says Don Flamingo. Now we know why. I always wondered why I said that. Let's see if I can avoid going three rounds with him this time. Bam. I know. Um, that's why I got so many. I got like three classic Nesses and three classic Snesses and then a bunch of spare controllers. Because I'm just like, I'm going to archive this shit and pass it on to my kids and I'm sure they won't care, but I, will, I want to always have amazing quality versions of these games. Always, always. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
I, I know of places where you can send away to have custom circuit boards made, and... But a lot of it comes down to... Uh, sorry, the mechanics of, like... How the rubber, like, stops the contact, and... All this stuff, so... There we go. I think we just avoided a three-round fight. Yay! On to Mr. Sandman. He's from Philadelphia. He says he's 31, but the dude looks a little older than me. signals that it's okay to start this thing of getting him, goading him into the attack, but you can counterattack so well. Now that signals he's about to do the thing. Oh, by the way, hi, Drow... Drill Jan? Welcome. I'm sorry if I messed up your name, Bo. Oh, shit. I did not mean to do that. Oh, I know. And... Like, I feel like... When I first got the NES... Um... This game and Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt... I, or what I got f with it... Since 1987, I guess. And, uh... I just felt like, I mean, Duck Hunt showed off the Zapper, Super Mario Brothers, and this game were, like, custom-made for this, the nest. They're perfect. I was just in love immediately with this machine. Might as well get my energy. I think, though, the best-looking nest games actually would be... Like... See, like, the Mega Man games that had really big sprites were done really well. Like, I like those sprites. And then some of the shading work done on latter era uh, NES games. Like, Kirby. Like, don't quite reach, like, maybe that's 16-bit, but they are, they are really, really good. Stuff like Super C looks really good. Here we go. I'm doing a lot better this time with that. Yeah, I'm not sure what I would say the best looking NES game is. That's an interesting point you raise. For its time, it was amazing. Like, my. Even my parents were like, this is cool. They wanted to play this one. Bam! That's how it's done. Alright. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I do have um, sprite limit turned off in my options. Maybe So maybe there would normally be more flicker than you're seeing. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it does... I don't recall it having a lot of problems there. I mean, if you think about it, the sprite limit was fixed per scan line, which is what would cause the bad flickering. But if you think about it, there's only two sprites, so it really didn't have that problem. Sorry, I was reading your stuff. Yeah, on real hardware it is really clean. I think probably because it's, yeah, it's two sprites. I'm not sure what the limit, I think it's like three sprites per scan line limit or something like that. And then it'll start blinking out. 
one of the sprites. Uh, at least the part that is making it go past the the three sprite limit on that scan line and take that out. And here we go. Oh, that was a short one. Whoa! Bam, bam, bam. Oh yeah, the corners of the screen are like showing garbage all the time. So much flickering, tons of slowdown. I thought it was a step back from the, the game before, in terms of visuals. Gameplay-wise, I would say it was probably the best the Mario ever was on the NES, but... Super Mario Bros. 2 is the better looking game. Like, the adorable cartoony sprites are really, really cute, and um, it never runs like Mario 3 does, either. Mega Man 2 is an excellent choice. I mentioned that one myself. I remember the screenshots of like the the dragon just making me like stunned. Like I was uh, obsessed with Mega Man 2 before it even came out because it got this big feature in Nintendo Power. And when I saw the dragon, I was just like, oh my god, it's, it's like such an epic fight. It is a big moment in that game when you fight the dragon. Whoa! I have a lot of love for Super Mario Bros. 3. You're not going to hear me say a lot of bad things about it, but I'll agree. It's uh, a little difficult on the eyes sometimes. I didn't even like how Mario looked like, um,. He's in this weird pose when he's standing still with like his fist at his chin or something. Like it looks just weird. Oopsie. Too early. A lot of the, I do that a lot because I kind of know the script, so I'll pre-dodge, thinking that it's coming. So sorry about that twitchiness on my behalf. Here we go. Well, the original trilogy of games um, is all so solid. I mean, but if you're going to play any game uh, from that series, like modern or retro, it would be Mega Man 2. It's honestly like a legitimate contender for like the top five NES games ever made. And I think on this list, um, and the Nintendo Power list, when you add up all the points, it def I think it is number five or six or something. Okay, here we go. You know it. Ralph, welcome. I had to teach Mr. Sandman what it is. Or sorry, Super Macho Man just then. It's really hard to talk and do this. Woo! Get back in there. Damn it. See, kind of used to certain timing. But yeah, a gamer dude, I can totally recommend the entire original trilogy of Mega Man. It's, a, it's, uh, it's like the first one is really great. It's just a slightly less um, polished. The music isn't as memorable. But Mega Man 2 is just one of the best NES experiences. Or sorry, not uh, Gamer Dude loved it. Um, that's a whole lot of show. You should play 
Mega Man 2. Alright. Surviving that round is what it's all about. So you see, in Another World Circuit, they changed Mike Tyson's name to another M Champion. Maybe Mick Champion? Um, isn't that odd? I have no idea why that is, but that's just one little change. Yeah, that was good. It was like a sports highlight. And I was kind of doing... oh yeah. Whoa! 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 So now the game opens up quite a bit because the uppercuts aren't instant knockdown and you can hit them like a bunch. I would say after three, Mega Man Ness games started to not not be bad, just kind of weren't pushing the envelope anymore. Like, the formula was known. I was actually pretty excited when the newer series started coming out and adding cooler moves, but it just felt like the essential additions, like, in 3 you get the slide, right? Like, that was a big deal. There just wasn't anything that was a big deal like that to me later on that made it like, oh, this is a new Mega Man game. It's like, Oh, he got me. There it is. <laughs> I do that with Strider, the end on a frame that's cool. Like, uh, the arcade or Genesis Strider. It freezes your character and takes the background away. And kind of shows you, like, stage two clear. And, uh, you can be doing anything in that moment. That's kind of fun. Well, we're about to beat it for the second time tonight. And then I'm about to beat, uh, regular Punch-Out. Oh, did I not do the thing? I didn't do the thing. Oh well. See, I don't even remember what Mega Man 5 was like, dude. I... I so I, by default, have to agree that it is probably trash if I can't remember it, because I totally play through it. I'm always doing the jab thing. Alright, so one, two. Nah, I think I'll just hit Mr. Dream and then we'll be good, in my opinion. There's only so many times we can, because there's really not much else that's different. that thing. One, two. Why am I not dodging? There we go. One thing I always felt was a waste. It's the arcade Mega Man power battle games are so crappy. Yeah, I know. I mean, they were just jumping in on the Street Fighter 2 craze. Like, all the fighting games got way out of hand for me. And now, they just aren't even fun now that the home consoles got them. Like, people are counting frames. They know every single move, how many frames of animation are in every... Are, or, sorry, how many frames of screen time are dedicated to every frame of animation. And what counter you can do that cancels that animation. There's the only thing that's different in the ending. Time. Everything else about the ending. He gave me a little wink. Everything else about the ending on another world circuit is the same. I don't know why they threw that in. I have not beat the SNES version of Punch-Out. I don't think. So that'll be interesting when I get to that one. 
Yeah, I know, right? Street Fighter 2 was like, you put your quarter up, and you just jump in, like, and everyone could just kind of pick a character that seemed to their liking and have fun. It's so insane, like, what goes on in fighting games now. As soon as people started counting frames, it was over. And, uh... And, uh, you know, part, and part of that is, like, online battles being built in, but... Mainly it was just that technology got good enough for average people to start counting frames. Alright, that's it for Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. That's everything there is to see. The busy signal, the another world circuit with the alternate ending, every single character, uh, the credits, Easter egg. So let's have a look at um, regular old shitty fucking goddamn. Oh, I don't even have regular punch out. I must have just like deleted it in anger. Let <laughs> see. I think I have it somewhere. Let me find it. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Sorry. It's funny how the later games basically follow the opposite design. Yes! Exactly. Ugh. You're speaking my language, dude. It just it just got so crazy. I mean, I saw people of all ages playing Street Fighter 2 in the arcade and having a great time. And um, just the fact that it could accommodate all these playing styles. And in fact, most people never even knew the um, the secret moves until like you uh, like I learned them from. I think EGM published them or something. All right. So most of the time, people were just kind of vibing out, like, how fast they were and how what kind of reach they had. They weren't... They weren't obsessing over the special moves thing. Okay, I think RetroArch just crashed again. I'm having a difficult night, man. that end up on there? No. Punch out. There it goes. Totally skips the intro. Let's enter the classic code. Uh, 007373. Sorry. I'm not looking that up. That's straight from my brain. 007373. Oh shit, it's totally glitchy. Well, I guess that's what I got. I could try a different core really quick. Let me, um, let me try to Nestopia instead. Final Fight was incredible. I agree with you about the 80s to 90s uh, Capcom games, by the way, uh, Ralph. Oh my god, their, their animation their 2D animation was just awesome. I, I don't think it was surpassed until uh, SNK got into the later years of Neo Geo's life. And come on. There we go. Yeah, this is the dream fight with Mr. Dream in the re-release of Punch-Out after Mike Tyson's contract expired. Um... I have not seen the Final Fight PC remake, though. I, I'm gonna have to look into that. 
And I, the chess game is a great analogy. Because that's what Street Fighter was really like, was moves and counter moves. Okay, hold on. So it should be the same. Same programming, different ugly sprite. With his googly eyes. Kind of looking vaguely like Brian Cranston. spent no time on this shit. The fucking art is terrible. Yeah, King of Fighters uh, 2D animation is fucking insane. It's as good as it gets. I have not seen 2D animation that was better. Neo Geo is like this freakish occurrence of like a single platform like sticking around so long that they could pull off shit like that. Um, that's amazing. Well, now you're seeing him. I don't know what you think of him, but it, I think he's fucking stupid. So now you've seen this guy. I think people still love the Capcom beat em ups though. I mean, Streets of Rage was a great home beat em up because of the co op. But when you're talking arcade, it's all about the Capcom and Konami beat em ups. Okay. Oh. Have to survive those jabs. There's nothing you can do. You cannot. Uh, dodge them. You have to block them. Bam. Don't to punch his stupid face. I would say the co-op makes Streets of Rage worth a look to. And the music is good. But it is pretty, like, tame Gameplay-wise, let me back up to when I get that star. Two. Oh, you can only do it once. There we go. Getting the exact result I want, because I don't want to look at this fucker first. For very long. But the Capcom games, oh my god. And they... People shit on Capcom, like... I saw this awful YouTube that was... Ranking every single game in the Zelda series. From beginning to end. And, uh... Minus Cap was last, like, out of 30 games. I was like... Why? Uh, like, Capcom made that one, and it was... It had a great gimmick and being big and small. Their animation was like sh Street Fighter level. Um, it was adorable and awesome to play. Good 2D overhead perspective. Um, I don't understand. And uh, people like to mock them now because they haven't had a hit and are relying too much on Street Fighter these days. Yeah, Konami are the button masher ones. Yeah, that's true. And they were also license uh, license factories. Like, they would get the license for uh, Ninja Turtles and Simpsons and whatever, and Konami would crank those out, whereas, um, yeah, there's a lot more going on with Capcom games, I think. Like, Knights of the Round is just a crazy... And Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, those are just crazy creations. My, tell me about Minus Cap. I don't understand how it was last on that list with like spirit tracks and four swords and 
stuff like that out. That was, they were fine, but like, you know, I mean like, they were worse than Minus Cap. Let's agree to that. I think people just felt like it was too... They saw 2D Zelda and wanted it to be like a, a Link to the Past sequel. And it was its own thing. And I wasn't disappointed at all. I thought it was awesome. Now Ninja Turtles... I figured out some mechanics to it that helped me, like, avoid it feeling too random, like, and you can see people play through playthroughs of it that are no hit, like, they never take damage. So, I have to believe there is a system in there, but certainly if you sit, if you just button mash and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the foot soldiers or the bosses, like, you're gonna get hit, and it's pretty much not up to you whether that happens, and that gives you this random, out-of-control feeling. But... You actually have to invest in, like, learning their patterns, and then you can start, like, sticking and moving a little bit in Ninja Turtles. And it can be tedious, like, oh, I'm gonna hit him once, you know, but the no damage runs do that. There we go, that's Mr. Dream. Resident Evil gets more attention than Street Fighter? Hmm. I, like, you'd be right, maybe I'm out of touch. I love Hagar with his with the guys in his uh, arms. Like I would, I love playing Hagar in the SNES final fight. Which I don't care what anyone says. That was a great port. Missing guy, missing level, whatever. I played the shit out of it. Um, yeah, no, the Capcom new beat 'em ups like nobody else. Um, and. You had options when Hagar had an enemy in your hands. You could uh, pile drive him right there, or do that awesome jumping pile drive. He's awesome. Final fight's incredible. There's not a deterministic way to throw an enemy, but I think it's every other combo finish, if that makes sense, in, uh, in TMNT. Where's Flitchard? I was gonna play Taboo now. <laughs> I I did play Dungeons and Dragons. It's crazy long for an arcade game. That's totally nuts, but I I really respect what Capcom did. It was a cool idea. Let's see what the hell he wanted to play Taboo for. Flitchard, this is for you. Oh. Nemo? Okay. Maybe I it crashed again. I'll do Nemo, since Flitchard isn't here to appreciate the taboo thing. I will definitely... Ralph, thank you. I will definitely look for that. It's, wait, isn't Capcom making a beat-em-up bundle, or did that already come out? And that's what... That's not what you're talking about with Final Fight, though, right? Oh, shit. Good question. Let me see the... Um, Top 30 list, really quick. Ness Index. So, ranking. I'll bet it is. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is. It's, it was the 86th highest ranking. Uh, Nemo. Uh, Taboo never made it, though. Let's see what... Okay. <laughs> It crashed again. RE7 was trash. Let's see, the last one I played was... Was it uh, 5 that had... Yeah, I think it was 5 where they were in like an African village or something, right? Ah, shit. That was the last one I played. Um... I kind of played like the first one on PlayStation and then didn't play the sequels. Maybe the second one too. And then I played four because I heard it was good and it was. And then I played five and I was like, ah, that was okay. And now I haven't played six or seven. So kind of a checkered history with 
Resident Evil. It's a series I appreciate, though. Alright. Let's try Taboo. Six was the multi-character one. This is ringing a bell. Yeah, I don't think I heard good things about Six, now that I think about it. Alright, Taboo. So what we're supposed to be able to do is ask this thing questions, maybe? Oh, it's a... Uh, it's a rare game, you can tell by that font. RE6 is the Mega Man 5 of this series. Uh, okay. I'm gonna just put J. I'll tell you my birthday. I wonder if they expect the European order. Uh, Kakuk Kerbaga? <laughs> Thank you for that, uh, follow, appreciate it, welcome. Uh, let's see, our, your question, what do we want to ask the spirits? Um, let's see. Can anyone think of something we want the spirit world to tell us right now? We'll take requests on that. Okay, yeah, you know what, you're right. I think that's the- I can see that divide. And I actually really like the vibe of the early ones, and uh, Silent Hill, which all kind of had tons of atmosphere. Um, but RE4 felt really solid. Like, I think it did third-person camera in a really interesting way. Why does it hurt when I pee? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Why does it hurt? Whoops. Is that me? I missed the U. U. T. Hmm. I don't like how it line wrapped just then, but let's continue. When I Why does it hurt hurt when I pee? Wow, trippy. <laughs> it's a good question. You, the Knight of Swords, I will show you the <laughs> Taking this stupid question very seriously, I see. I wonder how much Rare spent on this. This looks like a pretty cheap game to make, I think. Your present position is loneliness, separation, or abandonment. <laughs> so, the prostitutes gave it to me? Your immediate influence is security of home and family life. Oh. Well, okay, I have a good job and my wife is pregnant with twins, that's all good. Within your present frame of reference is... I don't actually sleep with prostitutes, by the way. Uh, of reference is daydreams and fantasies. That's always true. Who is that not true of? We live in a fucking nightmare world. Fantasy is like all we have. <laughs> present events are based on able to conclude a laborious task. Is that English? <laughs> yes. Recent past events are happiness, joy, or sincerity. I just turned 40 and my parents visited from out of town. 
and surprised me at my doorstep, even though they live in Oklahoma and I live in San Francisco. Near future influencing you soon is a masculine influence will be present. That's weird, because my wife is pregnant with twin identical girls, so I feel like I'm going to be the only man in the house, actually, in the near future. <clears throat> you in a proper perspective have our perfect happiness. This is... that's not English, man. And Rare is a, is a British company, so what the fuck. Factors which affect others are overcome conflict or struggle to become a stronger person. Okay... It's like I've had more coherent fortune cookies. Hopes and fears. Yeah, your inner emotions sense... I don't think it gives a shit about your question. This is like just psychoanalysis at this point. Your inner emotions sense or will shortly sense capable of uncovering or discovering the unknown or inobvious. That was word salad, my friend. The conclusion of the issue is a friendly educated gentleman. What are you even... This is absolute insane. Okay, California. Amount of numbers. So I'll go with six. I love when there's six numbers. Oh wait, let's do eight. That's a crazy amount. And I'm 40. And I like the minimum of things to be zero. Hey, my lucky numbers are nonsense. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's nearly midnight. I think I've done everything I can do, and my machine has been exhaustingly uncooperative. So I might call it a night. I would normally go till midnight. Uh, but hey, that's a whole lot of show. I hope you come back. If you, uh, if you enjoyed, go ahead and hit the follow button. I'd love to see you. I'm going to follow you after this. Enjoy talking with you, man. Do you stream anything cool? Yeah, I, if I paid $50 for that, I would be pretty pissed off. I, oh, you don't stream? Okay. Well, I'll follow you anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah. Knowing Rare, I mean, I worked with Rare when I was at Microsoft Game Studios, and they were really competent and really smart people. Like, and we trusted them to help us make like the avatar system that Xbox got, and we um, uh, linked that into the Connect stuff with them. And, um, but yeah, on the other hand, I also worked with them on Banjo Kazooie: Nuts and Bolts, and that was a uh, not as good game. Um, Anyway, you guys are great. I love hanging out with you. And uh, I'm sorry to say, though, that I'm going to be traveling for Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, too. I'll be back uh, Tuesday night, I think. And so we'll continue the Nintendo Power Project then with the number one game on this list. Let me turn off RetroArch here and get back to our slideshow. It should show it imminently. Yeah, you too, man. It was great to meet you. Number one game, Legend of Zelda. We've played every single game. And then I'm going to do a... We'll probably do two nights of Legend of Zelda. I think it might take, because um, I'd like to do the first and second quest. And then I'm actually preparing a special retrospective of... Nintendo Power Issue 1 and the stream so far. I've been editing highlights and uh, we'll have like a great look back. You will not believe how lo-fi and shitty my first stream was. All my drinking, all my cursing, the dad jokes. Um, 
it's been a lot of fun. It took us a couple months to get through issue one, but as you look through issue two, most of the games are imported. There's only eight new games, so we're going to start flying through these issues really quickly as we go on to the next issue of Nintendo Power's top 30 list, because I'm not replaying the games. Um, we'll just do what's new. So, um, yeah, <laughs> be a Thanksgiving nicely. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, you guys are the best. Fletcher, I'm sorry we lost you. Um, and I'll see you guys Tuesday. Have a great one. Have a great rest of your night, too.